Hello and welcome to our weekly boxing chat on Sky Sports News. I'm Andy Scott. I'm joined by Gary Logan. And this week, we're going to kick off with a very exciting announcement in the welterweight division. I'm delighted to announce that Florian, the Albanian king, Marku, and Chris, two slick Congo, have signed to fight in March on a boxer and Sky Sports card date and venue to be announced later this week. And I'm even happier to say that we're joined by both fighters in the studio to discuss the fight. There's quite a bit of history between these two already, so we are taking one or two precautions and speaking to them separately. First, Chris Congo joins us. Chris, great to see you. Um, your thoughts, you must be over the moon. This, is, this has been a long time in the making and there's a lot of history with this one. 100%. Um, I want to obviously thank <clears throat> my Lord and Saviour. I want to obviously thank Ben Shalom, thank Boxer, thank the Sky team for, for finally making it happen. We've been wanting this fight for a very long time and now it's here and I can't wait. Now, there, there's a lot of history here, so he's going to have his say in a minute, but where did this all start for you? I mean, I know that there was history about you fighting and disagreements yeah. about a weight previously mm -hmm. uh, where you were willing to step in at short notice. Yeah. But the one that sort of um, pricked our attention was the pair of you scuffling at a press conference and you ended up going through the backdrop. And what, what's your version of events? Um, I've been wanting to fight him for a long time. It's a good, big domestic fight. And this should, uh, this should have happened a while ago. So, so what's but, happening here? A nice, a nice friendly discussion? Yeah, at the start, a nice friendly discussion. And then obviously it turned into whatever it turned into. But I'm not phased by that. Right now, my focus is on the fight. And I can't wait for it to happen now. So did you think... So are you trying to negotiate a fight at this point? You're saying to him that you want to fight him? Yep, I'm saying to him, I want to fight him. I'm saying, let's make this happen, you know, and... For him pushing me, I, 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 till, this, till this day, I don't understand, but it is what it is. Does it not make, um, make it a bit more <clears> personal? <throat> I mean, uh, I know we've just done the podcast upstairs and mm -hmm. just business was a phrase that was used. Gary's laughing, just business. But I wonder, once we've seen that, it, it must have a personal dynamic to it now. Maybe to him, to me, this is, this, is, this is what the fight game is and this is how I see it and I'm ready to just make it happen and show you guys why I am, till this day, the best waterway in the country. Uh, when we, we set this fight up, what is the difference between you and him? That I'm better than him, straight. Sh lit literally, I believe I'm better than him. I believe through my experience is the way we're going to see the win. And uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's wait until the time comes, but we will be working. Do you rate him as a fighter, as a boxer? Yep, good fighter. He's improved, but not better than Chris Congo. Do you believe that you knock him out? 100%. 100%. That's, that's the aim. We're going to continue working and working and working, and we're going to break him down. We will get to have a press conference, and the one thing I would give Florian immense credit, he's a showman, he's, yeah. uh, he's a good talker. Yeah. How do you keep a cool he head in a, in a hot kitchen? I mean, everybody knows me. I'm always cool. I always do... I always, I always come and show excitement in fights. I don't really talk much. I'm all about action. And we've all seen that through my previous fights and I'm about to show it again. Let's bring in Gary Logan. You've got a big Cheshire cat smile on your face there. <laughs> well, I think this is a fight that we've been, we, we've been talking about for ages. We'd love to see Florian and Chris get it on. And now we get our chance. Skill-wise, take the personalities mm. out of it. Take the personal... Skill I don't want to use the word high. hatred, but personal feelings out of it. It's a yeah, great fight. Skill factor's high. Um, Florian, I, I believe, doesn't... A lot of fighters and, and, and maybe their teams don't give him the respect because of he hasn't got the extensive amateur background that Chris has got. But here's the thing. Chris can fight and so can Florian. And we're just going to have to see who can implement their game plan on fight night because... Florian's buzzing. He's been through the tough times. He's had his cuts, his comebacks, stopped opponents. Yeah, I mean, this is his Chris last fight, Gary. He yeah. was explosive, impressive. Yeah. Too reckless, still in Moran, too you know? Reckless, too <laughs> reckless. We'll be, too we'll, reckless, is that what you're saying? Yeah, you tell too me, Chris. Reckless. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be waiting to... We'll, we'll wait until we see that day. Yeah. If he does... If That's he's a reckless beautiful like counter that, shot. If he's reckless like that, you, you'll walk into something. Do you believe you have the, the answers to the questions that he can pose? What, what does he do well? Uh, he comes forward very well. He some, at times, he's, he's reckless as he is here. But, um, yeah, we'll see. We, mm. we got his breakdown. Don't want to talk too much on it, mm. but we'll be training diligently. You said you, you were laughing at home during this fight, during this stoppage. Why was that? 
uh, just just because how reckless he was. You know, you can't be an elite fighter and be that reckless. Uh, come on, it's it's common knowledge. Boxing is is, is about skill. You can be as strong as you mm. want. You can do whatever you do, but it's purely based on skill. I think every, skill I think a lot fight. of fighters have a have a gamble element in them. Florian's of that ilk. He comes from um, a strong sort of MMA, mixed martial arts background, where they just open up. When they see a man go in, they open up. In boxing, that might be his undoing, but the fact is it makes him exciting. It made, it's giving you, you look at him and you think it's a weakness, so you, it's down to you to exploit it because obviously you think it's reckless. For and sure. yeah, he is a little bit square when he comes on, but he's got very good hands also. What about your last outing? Um, Bitterly disappointed that you know that you couldn't get over the line against mm -hmm. Echo Essman, a quality champion. Um, do you feel at all that you are in that? I don't want to use the phrase last chance saloon, but you know, you're in that. You, this perhaps could represent your last big opportunity to get where you think you can get to in this sport, the big platform. Yeah. You know, this could be your launch pad. It's definitely going to be my launch pad. It's going to be a performance, people are going to know, yeah, Chris is back. Obviously, you can see here, with, with this fight here, I went in the trenches. This was my first 12 rounds mm. with, with a tough, tough guy that just doesn't stop coming forward. And obviously, I'm landing good shots, but then he did come on later on in the fight, but I weathered the storm and I was still there. I was still fighting. I was showing so much heart in this fight. Yeah, as you can see here, I, I, showed, I showed what I'm about. I showed what I'm about. And I'm about to show it again come uh, the day of fight night. Do you think that he uh, has made a mistake here? I mean, are you, uh, I, I made the example earlier. When Tyson Fury was talking to Klitschko, he said, I've got to stop. Mm -hmm. I've got to stop telling the truth because <laughs> I'm going to scare you off of the fight. And I'm not saying at all that Florian Markin can be scared out of a fight. But is there a part of you that thinks they've made a mistake and you don't, you don't want to say too much? Well, he said that he's here for the money. I said I'm here for the glory. So we're, we're focusing on two different things. I'm focusing on the glory. I'm focusing on being the best at this game here. He's focused on the money. So we're focused on two different things. And we all know being the best will get you the money. So that's, what, that's all I'm focused on, just improving every day. Every day is a chance for me to improve in the gym. And like I am, and I, I, I will be the better man on the night. Do you want to make it official? Let's make it uh, official. Well, listen, Let's I mean, there you go. I mean, this I, is what we're here I'm for. I'm going to pass this across this the table This is what to you we're there. here for. There you go. Yep. So you just need to sign your bit. Signed, done, deal. <laughs> Okay, oh. so that's that's fifty percent of this deal done, Gary. Yes, sir. No, 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 no. Your percentage, I can negotiate you another time. Um, Chris, great to speak to you. Best of luck in your preparations for the fight, and we'll see you soon. We're going to hear you. from Florian shortly, but first, here's a look at the blockbuster clash coming up on Sky Sports next week. Friends shouldn't really fight, but in this case, it sounds like this might be the exception to the rule. You, know, you don't have to be a bad man to put on a good fight. Where's Dan Aziz? I just saw him. Dan, lift up your hand. We have to big up Dan. I thought I'm number one. Aziz will say the same and the others will say the same. Oh, I've got the British crowd, so I'd like to say I won that like three, four years ago. Yeah. <laughs> we understand what's at stake. It's a final eliminator for what I for 12 rounds or less, we can put aside and we can make it happen. I've probably known him over 10 years, always been training, sparring together. Boxing is what's brought us together. Just give me one big shot. I'd see red, I don't care. Friendship doesn't matter inside that ring. My sparring partners, they're my best friends. When it's time to fight, you see a different side of us. He's an angel outside, in the ring, Tasmanian death. I know his strengths, but I also know his weaknesses. Friends are no friends, someone coming to do that to me, I've got to fight back. This is business. I'm next! Well, excitement building for that all London clash. Cannot wait for next week. But before that, the Florian uh, Albanian king, Marku, has joined us. <laughs> the, the Florian. Uh, great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Chris had a bit to say there. I don't know if you could hear all that, but what's your take? Why is this fight happening now? Tell me a little bit what he was saying. He said you're doing words. it for the money. You, he's doing it for the legacy. So you're, you, that you are uh, after different things from this boxing game. First of all, we all need money in this life because nothing is for free. 
let's say the things how they are. Second, the only thing that he, he can fight at the moment is the legacy because he have lost and I am that the one that I give him the opportunity to fight me because I had also other fights to fight, but I did this fight and I'm happy that I did the fight because the fans love it, the crowd uh, love it and they think that he's gonna cause me problems. But if he's saying that he doesn't need money, he's lying. Nobody works for free. You don't work for free. Nobody works no. for free. I, I, but to be truthful, only one of us is a prize fighter, exactly. and it isn't me. Exactly. Uh, what about the, the fight itself? He said you're too reckless. That will make you pay for being reckless. Everybody in my last fight have said the same thing. And when they are in the ring with me, they change their minds and something it changed. And I'm going to prove one more what uh, is my uh, difference and how I am inside of the ring. When he going to be face to face with me, he's going to feel my power, my speed, my willness and my will. And then he's going to understand why I'm winning and why I'm knocking people out. Do you think that there is a disconnect between what people think of Florian Marco mm -hmm. on the outside and then there's a difference when the first bell rings? Do you think that people think that it's easy to beat you? Do you think that people uh, think that you're overrated? And then actually, once the first bell rings, they find out a pretty hard lesson? I love that. I love it when the people think that uh, I'm easy, they're going to beat me, Florian doesn't know boxing, but they forget that I haven't lost. I had 110 kickboxing fights. I lost three times only. I had also MMA fights, and now I'm undefeated also in boxing, knocking people out, calling out the biggest names that we have in the UK, like it's George Taylor, Conor Benn. I don't want to mention also two other names that we gave offer and they didn't want this fight. And we choose Chris Congo. And, but when the bell rings, they're going to respect him one more, once more, like they did with the last guy that it uh, lasts 54 seconds. He's very confident that he wins this fight by knockout. Who wasn't before he fights me? <laughs> Tell me who wasn't. Everybody was. You know, everybody was saying the same thing. You're going to see, we're going to make him pay. But when the bell rings, their mindset and their heart change. My mindset and my heart grows and they want the, I want the win more than everything else. But they, when they are in the ring and they see me in front of them, they change their mind. And that's my difference. You like this energy, Gary, don't you? We, we, we've it. got an extended version of both fights together on, uh, love, on YouTube going out later, but you I, like this. I love the fully committed belief of both men. I don't doubt one... Sometimes you're around fighters, you can always see one that he's talking it, but he doesn't really believe it. These two actually do believe in what they're going to do um, and how they beat each other. And that's an amazing thing when it's like two move, virtually immovable forces of belief clash in the middle of the ring. <clears throat> and it's going to be about, obviously, so cliched who, who's better on the night, but it really is going to be about who... I think this is going to be like a, a one-shot pop where somebody stuns the other and we're going to have to see if the other one can recover. I think they're both going to get hurt more than once during this fight. To talk is easy, you know, as you saw, as you, as you said about Chris, that he was, and he's very confident. Everybody is confident before they step in the ring with me. But when the bell rings, they can feel how much I want this fight. Chris have shown it that after some rounds, his heart getting less, 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 and then he lose the fight. He start always good in the beginning, like you saw with Echo, he was winning the fight, five, six rounds. But when the fight is coming to the heart and how much you want it, he starts going down and losing his, his will. I not. Do you want to make it official? Do you want to sign on the, on the dotted line? Yeah, of course. That is a deal. <laughs> there you go. It's, it's official. It's official. Yeah. Um, thank you come, for coming in and doing that today. Uh, we've got about uh, a, a lo uh, our last minute, Gary. I just want to mm -hmm. ask you about the fight from the weekend. Natasha Jonas she defended her IBF World Welterweight title. So I think there's been quite a lot of fallout already. Um, the scores split opinion, the winners uh, even more. How did you score it at home and, and how did you feel afterwards? 96, 94 the first time. Then I watched it with a volume down. For whom? For Maya. I okay. thought Maya won it. I did think Maya won it. I thought she won. I thought Tasha won the first round. Maya won the second. And then Tasha won the third. And then after that, Maya was winning sort of like virtually. She, was, she, she didn't dominate. There were, were close clashes where you had to say you had to pick a winner. And, and in the later rounds, she did dominate. Going down the stretch, I thought she did really dominate. I thought Tasha did really well to stay with her. Um, Tasha will say it wasn't one of her best nights, but we got an incredible fight out of it. And I hope they run it again.
I really do. I was going to say, if I pushed you for one last answer and I said, if you were playing uh, Ben Shalom and, and Boxer, fantasy promoter, what would you do next? Would you do the rematch yeah. for Tasha? Would you do Lauren Price or would you do A Another, you know, I'd Jessica McCaskill? I'd do Lauren for Price against a high ranking A Another and let these two get it on and the winner fights Lauren. Jonas Mayer too, that's yeah. what you're saying. I think it deserves it. I think that, um, you know, every time we've had these big women's fights, these girls have stepped up in a massive way. It was, um, the quality was high. Tasha's body punching earlier on in the fight, her sort of shoe shining to the body and come back with the right was exceptional. But then Michaela found, found the answers and some, and I thought her inside work and her body work was what made the difference for me. Brilliant. Well, uh, that's great to sum that up, and I'm sure that that's going to run and run. Uh, that is it. That's all we've got time for. Uh, my thanks to Chris, Florian, and to you, Gary, as well. Remember to download the Toe to Toe podcast, and we will see you next week.